four comedians are also real good friends Working on jokes, the fun never ends They're asking each other, is this anything? I don't remember, did you guys decide Or am I just going to leave early or are we going to try to make it a one hour thing or i mean i'm fine with whatever i just i, I don't know if, if that well i definitely think that we should only do one joke each uh i'm not doing, I'm not doing any yeah if we, um, keep it for, if, if we keep it 10 to 12 minutes we're only doing four people because anthony's not going yeah so, so that's we a good could point keep it under that amount of time if we started she won't think it's weird if i don't go right she said she's gonna go uh, yeah, yeah, she's okay. doing bits. Okay. Yeah, 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 bits, bits, bits. Shit, the, the thing with guests is it's their first episode, so nothing is, like, weird to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and they nobody, don't know the format. They released one, so nobody <laughs> yeah. knows. This is the part them. of the show where one person leaves. I'm going to put that in. <laughs> All right, Jarbonator, who's leaving today? <laughs> next, next time, one of you guys have a meeting to speak it's to the lawyer. <laughs> today. Oh, welcome. Welcome, to welcome. Is this anything? Uh, I know a bunch of us listen to your album. It's awesome. It's hilarious. Thank you. Yeah, I just downloaded it today, and I listened before we came on, and I was just uh, it was really thrilled because some of this stuff I have heard, some of it I have not, and it's all really funny. And and you just you just recorded this like like you have some coronavirus ref references in there. Yes. And I was like, what? <laughs> when you said it, it like kind of shook me a little bit because in my mind I was like, oh yeah, I guess it's been a while. When did you record yeah. it exactly? It must have been like February, March, maybe something like that, right? It was March eighth, and there were March already 8th. people telling me oh that God. they weren't going to make it to my show because of Corona. Right. And then that was almost my last show. Then I had one more during the week, and then we were completely shut down. Wow. Was it a, you recorded it in New York? Yeah, I did it at New York Comedy Club. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah. March 8th. Yeah, that's insane. How, how close that is to when things shut down in New York. Yeah, it's literally yeah. like on the 14th or the 13th when I think things shut down. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting because the of the last comedy <clears throat> album. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it, might, it might be the last one. Well, I keep joking that I was like, I might go for a Grammy since the pool might be shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it was. It's so interesting because, like, I can almost pinpoint it, like, like as if I'm like looking at a fossil, you know? Because the words you said were like, you know, I kind of wish Corona hit because, and I was like. When the fuck would somebody say that <laughs> sentence? You know, I was like, this has to be March 8th specifically. <laughs> For us to know about it, but it didn't hit yet, but you're still doing a live show. I was like, all right, I can narrow this down pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we had a pool going. And Rob hit it, March 8th. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of comics that we're going to do specials or even record albums, and then it got completely derailed, and I'm I'm so grateful that I got it under the buzzer because mm -hmm. who knows when you're going to, I mean, some people are doing it now, but they're doing it at drive-ins and I'm like, no, I don't know. I don't want to yeah. do it that way. I want an right. audience. Yeah, the windshield special, wiper tracks yeah. on there uh, instead of yeah. the laugh track. God damn it. I was going to say horn honking, Brit, but I like windshield wipers so much more. The windshield wipers? <laughs> yeah, that's how they know that you're laughing, that people turn on their wipers. <laughs> yeah. I'm killing. But no, the point is that I did listen, and um, I only have a few notes, so this is the great. Great, great, great. It was so fun. It was really cool. I liked some of, the, some of these things that made me laugh out loud, so I was just really happy I got to hear it before I, before I saw you, so... Uh, yeah, it's, thank it's you. Tough. Yes, it is it, great. And anybody watching this should go listen to Sarah's album immediately. Yeah. <laughs> or go just highlight. stream it in the background while you do Aaron so I can get that sweet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dreaming that sweet money. half a penny. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, should, should we, we get, uh, start? Yeah, get, get going? Let's get started. Sure. Let's do that. All right. Uh, so, are so you Sarah, familiar with uh, what it is that we do? We know you're uh, on for the first time. I read the email. So, hey. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Jared, can you, you recite it back to us? 
<laughs> Prove it. Uh, uh, so for those who are listening then and, and are tuning in for the first time, uh, we pitch our joke ideas that we have. We haven't been able to perform on real stages for some time. And then we just punch it up. We give each other joke ideas and we riff off of those ideas. And today we have a very special guest, Sarah Tolmush, who's got a brand new album out uh, called Voluptuous Boy. And it's really excellent. So please check it out where all things funny are listened to. All right, so today uh, our order is Brett, Rob, Sarah, Jarrett. All right. Excellent. Okay. Uh, okay. I uh, got uh, some quick ones today. Um, you know, it's got to be hard uh, to be a paramedic or a lifeguard with social distancing. You know, if you got to do CPR, you got to have some long lips. <laughs> <laughs> no, somebody's <laughs> drowning. Hold on. <laughs> that joke is so dumb. I'm not sure. I dumb understand. is it, Jared? It's so dumb. It's as though the thing that you you just can't put your body next to somebody. The lips is what you're specifically trying to keep away <clears throat> because that's where Corona goes out to another person. <laughs> Can we see the act out again? I'm not yes. sure what was yeah. happening exactly. <laughs> is that the top lip? That's the top lip. Looks like. Yeah, that's the, I had to unfurl the rolled the up lip. Oh, it's rolled. And then nice. unroll it. So yeah. The act out needs work, but otherwise, and I'm discarding Jared's note. The joke is, the joke is perfect. I actually that, think that the act out should be really long like five minutes yeah. <laughs> for me that felt very long <laughs> that was that was felt like, was that not five minutes is my time <laughs> it was like 10 seconds oh man <laughs> if they, right, if they like if the that. audience gets the joke and and then you start acting it out yeah you can make it as long as humanly possible it would it, it, they would love it if oh, it does lack like logic though Yes. Right. <laughs> if, here's the thing. Here's the thing. All it's one of those jokes where if people are on board with how little it makes sense, it will get as good a reaction as it got from me just now. Oh man! I <laughs> believe that the logic is less important. For I think that it'll work, but I don't know. What do you, do you think that the audience would have an issue with that? Well, oh. maybe you should explain your logic afterwards while you're still putting I your can't. mouth it on I can't. It doesn't people. make any sense. <laughs> I'm glad that I don't have I any jokes to I need for them to, to just be today. like... <laughs> None of them would have any logic. <laughs> I need for the, them to go, okay, coronavirus, distancing, CPR, yeah. the mm -hmm. only way that can happen <laughs> is lip, long lips. Like, I need yeah. that to be the only thought in their brain. And in my experience with audiences, sometimes, like, that's enough. That's mm -hmm, they're okay mm -hmm. with the math of that. Long yeah. lips was what made me laugh. Just the just that's those words. The whole together. point of the joke is so I could say long lips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't care that it didn't make sense because you, you said long, long lips. lips. I mean, I mean, in all seriousness, you're obviously you're writing the joke in order to not make sense. You know for a fact that this, it, that, that the logic is the worst thing <laughs> imaginable. That's I mean, I do thing. now. <laughs> 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 but you usually are so good about keeping things tight, logical, making sense. And this is just such a fun <laughs> detraction from your normal stuff that they would just be, they're like, all right, he's being a stupid idiot. And I like that. I is there great. a way to explain that you're unrolling the lips? Because I was trying to uh, get out better at the act out. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I saw, I saw the bottom one. and then <laughs> I, figured, I figured it out. I knew what was going on. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll, I like I'll really play up the difference of the lips. <laughs> After you roll out, right, you should also give it a little flur, like a little flip. <laughs> so it catches some wind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got it like a, like a picnic blanket. You gotta, or you're at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> you need someone else to help you fold it back up. <laughs> What's something a lifeguard would say? Before they're giving CPR, I don't know. I don't think they say anything. Never, yeah, they just go for it. Actually, you're supposed yeah. to get someone specifically <laughs> to call 911. You're supposed to say, "You oh, call 911," yeah. and then oh, you okay. it's the only thing you're supposed to do. And then you're like, "I'm about to save your life." That's what you say before. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm about to save your life. Get ready for your life. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's not gonna be intelligible anyway, so I can just say anything. <laughs> 
I, I do like Anthony's note of, of after you're done with the whole act out, if the audience is still going for it, you just slowly <laughs> <laughs> put it all back together again. <laughs> and then just, uh, then say, go. thank you, good night. So I think that would be a really good closer. That's your closer. <laughs> and the album's called Long Lips. So the album's called. <laughs> I mean, ideally, he wouldn't have to say that because people will be carrying him out on their shoulders. <laughs> Brett, yeah. drunk, Brett, drunk, best comedian ever, Brett, drunk. And you can have merch. You just have lip extensions <laughs> as merch. Yeah. People all come in with those. Oh, no, no tablecloth for the table? No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a lifeguard, so. You know. <laughs> that would be funny if there were, then there were other examples of how, what, where the long lips would, would be useful. Do you have uh, that? A the long distance relationship, of... maybe? <laughs> what was it? A long distance relationship. <laughs> These come in handy. My girlfriend lives across town. Yeah. <laughs> I can really only go down on my girlfriend. <laughs> uh, I was a, a, a dumb tag that I thought of for if you do do like a long putting your lips back together is like you complain about it. It's just like, ah, oh, it's, so, it's like a fitted sheet, you know, trying to fold it <laughs> back. Or like one of those old maps. Yeah. <laughs> old map? Yeah. I mean, people, when you, you know, the old paper maps. Oh, right, 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 right. You couldn't fold them. That's right. Yeah. yeah. yeah if, it, if I could get really good at the act out, which this is all predicated on the fact that they laugh at the first part, and so mm. none of this may happen. <laughs> uh, but... I could probably use the mic stand as a prop to fold over in folding it back up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if my object work is, is good enough, but... Um, all right. Well, if you guys didn't like that logically unsound <laughs> joke... <laughs> then scrap it. I love in. this one. Go- uh, all right. Um, I, I bought a box of Honey Nut Checks, um, and they're really good, but not as fun to sing the song. Nobody can say no to a honey nut bowl of honey nut checks. <laughs> the other song. I didn't remember the other uh, song. Nobody can say no to a honey nut bowl of honey nut Cheerios. That's not I, I only, for people. I is barely the, remember it. Is that like ah, from the 80s? 90s. Huh. I uh, wish I had. It's not iconic, then the joke doesn't work. I wish I hadn't flipped out about how dumb your last joke was so that <laughs> I could flip out about how dumb this joke was. I know. I, I love this joke. I'm getting the feeling that you have a very niche audience. <laughs> niche. Niche. Um, I, yes, it's, it's very niche in that there is none. <laughs> so far, it's just you, it seems like. Yeah. <laughs> it's Rob, really. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, uh, Brett says actually that he purposely comes into this show with anything, like, any, like literally, he really takes the idea of the show to be like, what difference does it make? It's not supposed to be there. Yeah, that's the whole point. We'll yeah. make it fun and good. So th- for them, the show is this is anything. For me, it's this is anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so no, I love this, actually this, that the song is is not fun. It yeah, matter. I think it's great. I, I actually, the, the part of the reason I like this joke is because I had a, a, a similar joke, but it had no, it, it, no one remembers this thing. Uh, New York Telephone changed to 9X. And the song used to be, we're all connected, New York Telephone. I remember that. I remember that. And then it changed to, we're all connected, 9X. <laughs> and you're just like, I do, I do remember that. Why did you keep the jingle? <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> it work. Stupid. It just made me laugh so much when I was younger. And so that brought me back to that funny uh, thing. Yeah, I love, I love just that you're expecting it to be this note, and it's just but. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny to me, but I it does need everybody. That song needs to be iconic in people's brains. So if it's not, then the joke is, then it's nothing. Yeah. More importantly, uh, do you say niche or niche? Uh, do we have a preference here? Hmm. Who's, who's I think, think it's niche. I think it I niche I too. do exactly what Sarah did. I but always I say both. You say both. <laughs> I always say both because I don't know which one I it cover. is. <laughs> I think I think I think a lot of people say niche and then there's a small subset of people. <laughs> just a small group, like on the outskirts that say niche. Just like a little you know, I don't know, 
a group um, of people. That's, that's an excellent joke. You should do that's that on stage. Yeah, you should do that really one. Should. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, it's during my time at council. <laughs> during Brett's, yeah. <laughs> Just like a small, tiny bucket. Of stuff. Is that what you're going for? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I think that's we're, we're keeping it short today, right? So mm -hmm. this be it for me. Okay. Uh, thank you guys. Great job, Brett. Tell me how dumb my jokes were. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. This is uh, is it my turn to go now? Yes. Yeah. Are you recording, Rob? Not yet. Thank you so much. That's all good. To we go. like to record our sets individually so that we oh, yeah. don't have to take notes on. I the will. Gotcha. It record seems yourself. to be a lot easier because we forget the tags, um, and if you write it down, it's just like really distracting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if Brett wasn't recording, he wouldn't know how much I hated recording <laughs> this. <laughs> 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 it's not about making fun of the jokes. It's about riffing on the jokes. Yeah, that's, this is not normally what happens. That is true. That is I true. did come in with especially dumb jokes today. <laughs> I appreciate Jared's uh, criticism and Rob's support simultaneously. Um, but it will be easy for me to remember the notes there. Yeah. <laughs> I like the first one a lot. I think it's funny. Thank me too. You. Thank you, everybody but Jared. Com compared to the second one, I love the first one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, here is, I'm going to give you the quick one that I wrote this week because of Disney World. Uh, Disney World opened back up. Uh, but I got to tell you, after seeing a deadly virus spread globally in a matter of months, I don't need a ride to tell me it's a small world after all. That was the idea I came up with. That's it. That. All right. That's cute. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's a small world. <laughs> it's like a, a small world. The, the, the ride is supposed to show like different countries uh, around mm -hmm. the world, right? So what ah. if the joke incorporated the fact that uh, Americans can no longer travel to o almost anywhere in the world? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or the fact that every, every part of the world is like, the ones that, that took care of it, they're all like back in action like normal and we are still quarantined and stuff. You can just have the American ones just like shut down while the rest of them are doing their little animatronic. They're doing everything great. Yeah, it's just We're blacked just... out. <laughs> You're just on a river of phlegm and everybody else is doing okay. I like that idea a lot. It's almost like, in, because like, in the, the ride the way it is now, you're sort of like exploring different cultures and the different way they dress and you know, the way that their music sounds as opposed to the way that our music sounds. But in the new version, they could just be doing normal things like going to the movies or eating at a restaurant and people on the ride would be like, wow, <laughs> cool. Yeah. And then what would our song be that we're singing while it's blacked out? Like a disaster. Yeah. Burning uh, down the house or something <laughs> with like a... Talking about <laughs> down the house is good. Hmm. We'll just well we'll circle back to that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, keep that in mind. We don't have to do five minutes of us thinking. <laughs> um, so the the other thing that I was going to bring to you guys today, uh, it's a little bit more. There's more involved, and um, uh, I'm doing a uh, I'm, I'm working on a one person show, and it delves much more into my personal life. This one's a bit of a doozy. Uh, it's actually, I was sending this to Brett the other day, where uh, the, I, have been, I have been trying to test the joke out on stage by putting these two ideas together because it works well one after the other. But when I'm actually doing this show, these events are going to take place separately. And so the second part is going to be basically a callback to the first. But they both have to do with deaths in my family. So it's, it's a little heavier and, and darker and weirder. But the... Um, uh, the first, it's about how uh, I had to deal with Verizon Wireless after my uh, mother passed away because I needed to cancel her phone number. We had a family plan. Okay, so a lot of, a lot of setup here, but we're, we'll, just, we'll just chat this one out. Uh, so one of the things that I did have to do is I had to call Verizon, and we had a family plan of cell phones. It was just five lines for $200 a month. And uh, I call the number, I get a nice woman. She's like, hi, thank you for calling Verizon. My name's Sheila, how are you? And I'm just like, hey, hi, Sheila. I was like, I'm actually not, uh, not too good right now. My mother, <laughs> she, she passed away this week. And she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, thank you. Um, I says, we have a family plan, so I actually need to discontinue the number 5384. 
And she's like, of course, I'm so sorry. And she clacks away at the computer for a bit. And she's like, okay, the number's discontinued. Is there anything else I can help you with today? And I say, yeah, do you know what the new monthly payments are going to be? And that's when she goes, oh, oh yeah, you know, it's still just 200 a month. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I just, I thought you said that, so we had five, and it was 200, and now there's four, and it's uh, 200, is that, I just, I just thought that, okay, there's no way to, <laughs> 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 I was like, you know that we didn't just like lose the phone, right? We lost the person. That's like the, uh, there's nothing we can do to rectify this situation. $40 less. And she's just like, I just, I can't. It's nothing I can do. All right. That is just the introduction of that. My brother is now dead. Okay. Are we all caught up now? <laughs> is everyone... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This By the way, this is just for show. His mom and brother are fine. So, uh, <laughs> it's all for the no, joke. That's a joke. <laughs> they are dead. Um, so you hear him, and I'm like, five years later, I'm like, hi, Sheila, it's Rob Ryan again. Uh, yeah, look, you're going to want to go ahead and get rid of 5383 now, too. Um, and, and look, Sheila, I was wondering maybe if, I don't know, maybe Verizon has changed its policy sometime over the five years. Are we going to get any kind of discount on this? And she's like, no, I'm sorry. And I said, well, is, is it possible maybe we could get like a sad family plan? Is that possible? Is there like a, a down and out, just stretched thin family? Or maybe we could dissolve the whole thing. Because honestly, right now, Sheila, it seems like you're trying to keep this family together more than we are. At this point. <laughs> Uh, and that's where should, it ultimately ends. Yes. You should ask her how many more family members need to die in order for you to get the benefit. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Or do you need to start procreating to get back <laughs> to make the best out of your plan? Do you know there's a real answer to that? The, the family plan was from three to five. So if two more died, then we would have been, or one more died, we would have been good. Then you uh, should just do a gunshot in the background. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's done. <laughs> Sheila, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot myself and put my brother on the phone, okay? <laughs> Just don't log out because we got more work to do here. <laughs> that is so funny. How many That's more people really have great. to die? That That's is a great. great. I, and I've also, been... it's gonna be funny when you when she gives the real answer when she doesn't. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you're, more, like, and you're and you're good. She's, she's like three. The only way out is a suicide pact. <laughs> <laughs> I also it's really so funny, funny to just think of Sheila or Verizon as just like not budging. This is so <laughs> insane. Yeah, uh, I, that I was, like that it's the same person, even though I, I'm yeah, sure it wasn't. But yeah. obviously, no. I yeah. was thinking of addressing that one thing of to the audience. It's like, hi, Sheila, and then just giving a little like she doesn't have a lot of ambition. She, you know, <laughs> she's still stuck in the same job five years later. Whatever, but whatever, or 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 just who cares? Because I've done the joke. It's really, really weird because I've I've tried to do the joke on stage just to see if it has any kind of merit, or people are just like, dude, this is weird. Um, and I would do it back to back. So I would do exactly what I just did to you guys. I'd be like, all right, fast forward now. <laughs> you know, he's now dead too. Okay, we all good? And they're like, ah, Jesus, we hate you. <laughs> and then I would do the <laughs> second part. But I just needed to know if it was, if it was worthwhile at all. As I'm right. doing this one-man show, it's going to be, you know, 20, 30 minutes in between. I have to actually walk you through chronologically. So the second part will be a callback to the first. That's oh. what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I yeah, totally. think that you need to do an aside to mention that it, why it's Sheila again. I, I think it, okay. I think just get straight into it. Okay. I don't sure. think the audience will care. I just said I've never done it separately, so I don't, really don't know what kind of memory yeah. or information they'll need at that point. But uh, I, I like think they'll remember too. the name Sheila. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then if you just had one joke on the second one, that you could make a joke about her being there again. You know, just so they know that you mentioned her, they can remember that you mentioned her in the first bit. That's true. I don't know. No, I, yeah. I think that you don't need to make the joke, and uh, you should get, just get straight into it. But I also believe that an audience will be okay with the fact that 
using long lips makes it okay to social distance. <laughs> so, <laughs> call them the best barometer. <laughs> I love having a, a, a tad of a bit of goofy in there where the lot, you know, obviously it's, mm. it's silly. And hopefully, I'm trying to lighten it up every moment I can. I'm trying to make it lighter because. Everything else just seems so like ugh, a little too heavy and, and depressing. So I'm trying to keep it keep it up. Uh, I I love the idea of not calling attention to it. I think that it's kind of funny. But I also had a couple of ideas for how it might be funny to call that out. Like it's really good to talk to you again. Uh, thank you so much for the flowers. That was so that was so nice. <laughs> you know, are you making her into like a really sympathetic person before she again tells you that the plan is going to be the same amount of money? Uh, I was also considering, and this is just a matter of form, that the second time around, I would not give her a voice that I am just doing a one-sided call. So I'm not really being her at all. I'm just reacting. So it's, so it's more just driven by me and my, my mm. thing. Uh, because the way I think I'm going to frame it is that the dust has settled. You know, everyone has kind of gone back home and, and, biz and like lives are returning back to normal. And there's just one more thing I had to do. There's just one more call I had to make, you know, after my brother's passing. And then I, I, I decide to call Sheila and be like, hey, we got to take care of this thing, whatever. And, <clears throat> and hopefully there's something fun about that <laughs> or funny about that. People are like, ah, I remember, I remember this thing. Yeah. It, like not having Sh Sheila on the second part, but mentioning her name. But then I also like Jared's suggestion of like having her respond the second time to to your um, questions, just like how a, a what is it Veri how a Verizon rep would respond to something like that would be funny, I think. Right. Yeah. I guess I will just cont I'll just try them all, them all out. I got I got a bunch of different options. I'm, I'm and I don't um, do either. I do love the I have one more phone call to make, as though it's like the most special part <laughs> of the of the grieving process. You know. Right. <laughs> You know, it's sort of like, you know, in the movie when like um, when like there's a funeral and like the the two brothers have like that moment when everyone's left where they're like, all right, now we got to do the thing, you know, yeah, and they like yeah, have yeah, a gotta... scotch by the cliffs, you exactly. know, <laughs> they're like, this one's to the old man, but your version is like, all right, all right, just, uh, okay, here we go. You know, one more, <laughs> one more thing to do. One more, one more ride. One, one more time around the bend. So my yes, brother would have always it's... wanted <laughs> us to get a better rate. <clears throat> that is exactly <laughs> like it's a scheme. <laughs> uh, Rob, I, I gave you this note. I don't know if you um, uh, didn't like it uh, when, when you sent it to me. But in the first part, uh, I think uh, just when you mentioned, you know, uh, to, to Sheila for the first time, uh, that that uh, you know, your your you, one of your family members passed away. Um, uh, just a sidebar to say, which I know is a lot to put on a customer service rep. Oh, right, right. The thing I'm worried about right now is there being a lack of any jokes or funniness in the first half uh, because I, I kind of backload, you know, the family lines the in the second part. Uh, and you guys seem to enjoy that stuff more too, or the, the sad family plan, or you're trying to keep the family yeah. together more than we are stuff. So I like I, I'm wondering if I should share that wealth and like, I don't know. I need I need more funny <laughs> in the first part so that people there's something to call back to that people actually oh, oh I remember this joke as opposed to I remember that weird sad story that he told <laughs> or whatever. So that's what I'm that's the other thing I'm work, I'm thinking about. Uh so you're talking about the first part being when you call the first time. To call the first really time. Like, yeah. Gotcha, because right gotcha. now it kind of just ends with her giving me the bad news and then I kind of have like maybe a flippant comment or two and I'm not like, "Eh, it's not funny yet." So that's something I'm trying to. But your line, Sarah, is very interesting because uh, that that could maybe even, you know, be one of the solutions. To, you know, because yeah. I would I would be like, oh, that's so. How many more have to die before we <laughs> get off this planet? Because that's I, that's more lighthearted and funny. I think. I think it's crazy that more people would have had to be dead from the family plan than alive for you to get a deal. <laughs> it's five, right? Five total. Five and you people. needed three of them to to not be, so. yeah, because the family plan was like three to five numbers was technically it. Mm -hmm. So it was like unless we were dissolving this whole thing, <laughs> and we're like then I was like okay whatever. The, the, this doesn't really fit in, but I kind of want the customer service rep to be like when you're like uh, so what is the rate now and and she's like well how did they die? <laughs> <laughs> we have a like really great plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was she on the phone? 
What she on the phone is great. Uh, I don't, you know, this might not be the right solution, but if you feel like there's too much that's funny in the second part and not enough that's funny in the first part, like there might be some jokes that you can just transfer, that you can just move. Right. You know, like sad family plan might work in the first part. Mm. And then the second part can be how many people have to die before, um, you know, before we get some kind of discount on this. Right. But um, I'm not sure if there are things about the second part that rely on that or not. But, you know, that's just one of the one of the tools that I usually use if I feel like something is is weighted like less. I need more funny things in the beginning and less funny things in the end. Right. I I totally agree. That was my I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, I thought that, Jared, your note was going to be, this joke is so dumb. <laughs> um, but I was relieved <laughs> that you had real feedback for Rob. <laughs> the logic of two of your family members <laughs> passing away, just, I'm not, where's the... I do want. I, I did want to do a bit where that was my reaction to everything, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> uh so, Jared, I totally agree with you. That was one thing mm-hmm. I was considering. I was like, all right, let me just transfer a joke instead of two over here, but whatever. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is, uh, and this, uh, this could come later, is that to make the Verizon thing just one of a list of things that companies do, like that companies are relatively callous or indifferent to uh, extenuating circumstances like this, because um, I do have a couple of, of things that actually happen. And I was like, really? You can't even whatever? So I was thinking that if it's part of a thing, then, then the, the, the Verizon doesn't have the, uh, like the sole responsibility of taking all of that information and getting that across to the audience just for a one little payoff, only to then be called back to later. But if it's part of a slightly larger bit of just like, man, businesses don't care. The, the, the worst example of this are, are the credit card companies when... Oh no. oh no! We just lost Rob. He's not oh. uh, But our family well, his... plan right now. <laughs> right now. Real good deal now. <laughs> you think he knows? Do you think he's hearing us? Or do you think he's like? It'd no, be funny I mean, when he comes back. He's like crying. <laughs> 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 I, and he's like, I've never told that to anybody before, guys. And I'm just really, I just feels really. Well, I good just want to. I just want to spotlight him here because what what works for him? Oh, it won't let me spotlight him. Uh, what works here is that uh, he is not making an ugly face. I feel like whenever I freeze out, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. What I was going to say is nothing. I want to go on to Sarah so that Anthony can be a part of that. Um, All right. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thank you guys for your help. Yeah, but those were great jokes. Awesome. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Brett, yours was great, too. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> I liked just... it. I liked the first one a lot. Thank you, Anthony. All right, so, you know, we're online all the time, so, you know those videos, like, I saw a video of this baby with no arms um, feeding itself with its feet, (laughs) and you know how they're supposed to be, like, uplifting? Okay, so, I've seen so many of those that I feel like I need something, like, a heavier hit. That's funny. That's not enough. I can't. Where I'm like, I can't reach gratitude. Do you guys have anything <laughs> else for me? Like, I can't get there with this baby feeding itself. <laughs> Is there a baby with no feed, potentially? <laughs> that is such a great premise. Do you, do you have a baby maybe feeding somebody else? <laughs> maybe the, there's, a, there's a, a, a fa- he's feeding his family or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was thinking like, uh, like maybe like you put all of them together, like a guy be- that was deployed for years, surprising his family. Well, and then the baby hears his dad for the first time. Cause those are really big when you put a hearing aid inside your baby's oh, ear and they yeah. can hear the parent. So I figured maybe I could do like a really strong hit of that 
to get to my gratitude. <laughs> I love that. It's kind of dark, but whatever. I don't care. <laughs> it's so funny to combine. I love it. Two, like, I need to have a military. Like, you're like the director of, of this. You know, you're like, no, no, no. I want to see uh, a dad coming home from the war while someone's getting a cochlear implant. Uh, <laughs> and somebody seeing color for the first time through those color uh, yeah. glasses. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. And, and then maybe what? like an interspecies relationship showing up out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> like a possum that's friends with an alligator. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I don't know if it's, it's common knowledge enough, but and I, I don't even know which Asian country it is, but there are these life insurance commercials that are like so sad and moving. Um, I think they're Thai. Uh, I think they're from Thailand. Oh, but uh, I love that, that I have to go on the Asian web to find this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the Asian web trying to find <laughs> ad commercials. <laughs> Just to feel something. Uh, yeah. There is a lot of meat on that bone because it's such a strong analogy and it works so well. Like anything that happens between a drug dealer and a junkie when that junkie is desperate, I think is going to work really good in that joke. Like at one point YouTube can be like, I think you've had enough. And you could be like, I will suck your dick. Just give anything. <laughs> Come on, man. I need gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> do you have, do you are you going to talk about why you need more than a baby with no arms feeding itself to feel something? Um, I think cuz I you know, when we <laughs> consume as much content that we do that these things become like who fucking cares what's the new thing? Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean, which sounds yeah. so Awful, like a baby learning to feed itself with its own feet. I sh that should be the most amazing thing to me. But at this level yeah. with internet, I'm like, next. <laughs> yeah. I like that, though, as an introduction. Because I don't know if you were just pitching the idea or if you're trying to pitch the wording. Because that, that angle with that wording is, is more like, yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Where like maybe someone forwarded you or you, you saw an, like an ad, like the most you know, the most amazing thing, you know, this will bring tears to your eyes and you're like, all right, you know, let's see. And then, or you, or maybe it's almost like a challenge to you. Like, I've seen so many of these, like, will it? Or something yeah. where you know that you have been consuming so much. You're just like, I, uh, all right, let's see what happens. And then I just, yeah, I just love the idea of exactly you scouring the internet just the same way people would be like looking for really specific porn. You're mm -hmm. looking for extremely specific uh, videos that will make you tear up. Uh, yeah, maybe there could I, I be something to... with what you search, like you know, when someone's desperate for new porn, they're like interracial midget, you know, blah blah blah, and so you know, maybe something funny with what you type into your search bar, you know, oh, uh, yeah. for yeah, I'm on uh, a motion Pornhub. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd uh, be great. Maybe uh, some kind of what's what would be like a. Uh, porn compilation of of like Pixar movies, uh, maybe with the old man from Up dying, or his wife dying. Uh, I just feel like that's a that's a good hard fix. I remember like the this is I don't know. I remember I dated this guy that was really I think he was addicted to porn, and I, sometimes I would, and it would be on my computer because I had the only computer in the house, and I remember looking at the search, and sometimes. He wouldn't even need a story. It would just be a one-inch box of, like, a dick going to an asshole. <laughs> That's so weird to me. <laughs> like I always feel like I'm watching a biology video. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't need a story or anything. He didn't need a face. Straight up, yeah, just a straight-up biology of a dick going to a butthole is all he needed. That. <laughs> That's its own. That's its own bit. You could do a thing about yeah. like how creative he was, you know. Yeah. Just, like he had the best imagination of anybody ever dated. <laughs> Actually, it's weird that I'm gonna take the uh, the con on this because it's it seems that the sexual attraction should be the genitals to like an animal, and but we're as humans we're like yeah, but what does he do for a living? I need I need. <laughs> yeah. To know more how did these two before, meet? <laughs> before What's I get aroused by this vagina, I need to know. Love? Are they strangers? This is a one night stand. <laughs> Their family history. <laughs> is this dick cheating on a different butthole? <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> is there another butthole getting cucked right now? <laughs> <laughs> Would you imagine, like, if you could hear the other things that are going on in the porn while you're still holding that shot of the dick? You know, and so like you have like the woman who walks in and is like, Andrew, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, sorry, I didn't realize this was your sister, but it's still just his hard dick, <laughs> you know, but you hear all this stuff in the background. <laughs> this is not this is not like a joke or anything. I just um, and I, I'm not sure if this was part of your original justification for the first joke that you told, but just yeah. talking about um the way that you can build up a tolerance for things, be it coffee, be it drugs, be it porn, and how you keep on having to ramp up your thing. Like, I think that's so, uh, it, it's so relatable and it's such a, it's an idea that everybody, I think, understands. So it, it's, a, it's a really easy, uh, you know, journey from there to what, to what the joke actually is. Um, and I might yeah. just be telling you something that was already in your original justification, but uh, that was just, uh, I wasn't sure. Um, yeah, God. yeah. Th Two maybe good do jokes. something with that analogy of of going through cold turkey. Like, what would you have to do to 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 reset your tolerance? Ooh, oh yeah, that yeah. I'd have to watch awful stuff in order to get back to <laughs> right. Gratitude. Yeah, just a bunch of Trump conferences, like press conferences, <laughs> over and over again. I mean, I don't know if you want to put Trump into a joke, but yeah. Then I like if if you're able to get to that point, then I like where you start again so like you quit cold turkey you you got off the the juice you know you've been clean now for three months now when you just see like i don't i don't know what a good example of something that's subtle and small you're just like wow all right <laughs> you know like now you're back you're back to just someone got your mcdonald's order right you're like man you know the world is just yeah <laughs> sometimes good things do happen you know <laughs> That's or great. your friend uh your friend uh, gets a dog and you're like oh my god he's so sweet and and he's like thanks he's a rescue and you're like i no don't don't even tell me that uh, <laughs> i'm on the wagon <laughs> I, <laughs> is that dog three-legged oh god dog. <laughs> i'm not supposed to be seeing this right now this I might like be that. uh putting a hat on a hat but I like the idea also of your friends doing an intervention, but then intervention videos are also kind of that thing, you know? And yeah. so it's like, it's almost like you're in your own gratitude video at that point. Yeah, um, that's pretty good, Jared. I, I don't mind that. I, 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 I don't know how. <laughs> okay. Like I, I, I'd say do it. I, I liked Rob's, or, uh, sorry. I was just going to say, or I just cut off my own arms. <laughs> 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 so oh, I yeah. can just be my own gratitude video. <laughs> <laughs> I liked uh, uh, Rob's idea where it's something that applies to you, and that's the thing that makes you, you know, like seeing the baby with no arms, you're like, well, I don't care. But something like uh, whatever it is, McDonald's, they get your order right. You're like, yeah, there's really good in the world because it's, yeah. <laughs> it's like all, totally <laughs> selfish. I, I kind of like that, that side of it. Um, I have to jump off this sorry no problem sorry. bye anthony good oh, luck bye, take it easy anthony. all right see you later i was just say i, I if you want to go with a cynicism right off the bat with the baby feeding itself with with its feet uh it's like oh that baby has both its feet yeah <laughs> that's a great idea i love this yeah um, uh, also my favorite part of having uh i my favorite part of of rob's hat bit was that the guest was writing notes and didn't see it, and and I enjoyed I enjoyed him wanting her to see it so much. <laughs> <laughs> he just kept it there for a while. Yeah, I did just make sure. <laughs> uh, I also just want to throw this idea out as if you if you're gonna go down the route of I have to watch something else to like to desensitize, uh, or maybe just like do something else to desensitize, like calling your health insurance company or like being on hold with your credit card company. Maybe that's like a thing. I don't know. As a, a former painkiller addict uh, and uh, knowing a lot of people who, who have been addicted, what happens a lot of times is, uh, if you're going to go with this analogy, uh, is they are like, okay, I'm, I'm quitting this and I'm going to take up exercising because that's a much healthier thing. But then they just totally get addicted to that. And oh, that's yeah. funny. Total, <laughs> and so it's maybe an addiction. Yeah, you may, may go from one addiction to another. So now I do heroin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It Just to wean so myself good. off of the video. <laughs> Have you guys tried heroin? <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> I'm good with that. 
No, every video is an uplifting video. <laughs> it is. It's really insane how, I mean, I think even explaining a kid with no arms feeding itself is kind of fun. Like people will be like, yeah, well, we're I was getting laughing as soon as you were saying that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you said a baby with, with no arms, I was laughing. <laughs> Because you, really you know wanna... when people, they video it, they're like, you know, oh my God, the internet is going to love this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen people manufacture them too. They're definitely like fake. And you're just like, wow, now you're manufacturing feelings like this. What are you doing? Stop it. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I suspect some of those internet rage ones that make you upset, some of those feel so perfectly set up that yeah. I question. Because mm -hmm. I remember one time I saw... This guy call a girl a slut in some Europe park, and then she hit him over the head with a beer bottle. And I was like, I don't know. I feel like he would have started bleeding. It just seems like no one came to her defense. It just felt something that like a like a feminist porn site would be really into. Like you know, I'm like oh, I love it when a guy gets the shit kicked out of him for calling right. someone. A slut. It just felt <laughs> something that was like this will enrage people, and this will get you know, pushed up the algorithm. Uh, I like, Rob, your indignation at the fake video, transferring that to the indignation of getting, like, uh, heroin that's cut with baby powder, you know, where you're just like, come on, what, really? <laughs> it's what we've come to as a society. We're, we're, we're faking heroin now. <laughs> wow. Wow. It sounded my idea wow, earlier. What a world. Was <laughs> if you really took this far, and you, I like doing these long stories that make no sense at some point, but uh, uh, let's say you were to wean off, you do do the cross the cross addiction the way Brett was talking about. You wind up doing heroin, and then you say all the little tags that you said too. But then you get off the heroin, and you video yourself doing it, and then you're just like, "This is <laughs> I got off heroin, guys." I posted it to the internet. <laughs> now I just watch that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I got a lot of stuff out of that, so I feel really good about it. So thank All right. you. Okay. Yeah, that was great. Um, yeah. uh, I'm a I'm a weed person, and uh, weed people have a a reputation of being really lazy. Uh, but I'm not. I actually get a lot done when I'm when I'm high, and it's because I've tricked myself into being productive when I'm high by thinking it thinking of it as doing favors for tomorrow, Jarrett. Like, I'm just high and vacuuming. Like, oh, man, tomorrow Jared is going to love this. I cannot wait to see his face. <laughs> I, cannot, I can't wait to be his face. Maybe that's funnier. Oh, I see. Uh, and then maybe some other ideas I had were like, don't worry, tomorrow Jared, taxes are done. And uh, uh, you know what would taste so good right now? A nice, healthy salad. This is legitimate. That's a legitimately good way to motivate yourself. Is <laughs> thank you. <It's> my <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. I'm not doing jokes. I'm just uh, <laughs> really good ideas for the You're world. Writing a self help book. For, yeah, exactly. For pot smokers. <laughs> I'm so the opposite when I smoke pot. I'm like, this, uh, this is a problem for future Brett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so interesting because yeah, Jared, you are doing the the thing that nobody else does. So like when mm -hmm. you're inebriated and you're thinking about uh, future consequences. Uh, I guess the thing that I thought was funny about it was like how cute it is that I have like this, this like relationship with future me or like, mm -hmm. like future me is a pet that high me takes care of almost. Mm -hmm. um, but also this is an idea that I thought of when I was high. So um, <laughs> it might not have any legs. Um, well, I get that. I remember when I would drink a lot, I always liked cleaning my kitchen because I always thought it would make me feel better in the morning when I was hung over that my kitchen mm -hmm. would be clean. Oh, okay. That's and then it became, yeah, so it's kind of, it feels like that same mentality of like, this will be really good for her in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jared, mm -hmm. I think that is, that the, the way you explained it there is, is a little uh, funnier to funnier? me. Funnier? Yeah, yeah, if you could contrast that with like i want to be lazy but then i also love cute things when i'm high so the only way i can trick myself into not being lazy is to think of myself as a pet okay that's funny or future me as a, a, a pet like yeah. think, think about my happy little face when i get my taxes done uh that to me i is just a, think i think about how i'm gonna uh, I think about my face when I see tomorrow when I see my clean kitchen. It just makes me feel so warm. 
something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the rea- the reality is like, I just everything is so fun when I'm high that just like filling up the soda stream bottles, you know, or I'm just like, you know, stuff like that. Oh well, you know what? That that actually justifies things for me a little bit better. The fact mm-hmm. that you don't mind almost anything, You're like mm-hmm. everything is fun. So why wouldn't I just do hard work, or like why wouldn't I do the things that I don't want to do sober? Mm-hmm. That way, now it's two things. Like I still had fun, you know. Why? Yeah. Like I don't know. I'm I'm just trying to wrap my mind around the logic, so you don't have to take any of these ideas. But the idea of like, um, why do something fun when I'm already high? You know, like, mm-hmm. w- w- I'm already having the blast <laughs> in here. So what difference does it make if I'm watching a movie or cartoon or if I'm doing my taxes? Like, woo, it's all, it's all silly. That's so funny. at least with, the, with, the, with this stuff, you are, you are doing something good for future you. Yeah. Uh, or whatever. Why? If everything tastes amazing when you're high. So why eat candy? You, you know, go, like right. a salad well, will taste logic. just as amazing. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Tell and me you can, why doing the taxes is fun as a high person like look how mm-hmm. straight the lines are in all the brackets <laughs> and i get to draw on it w w w two so funny letter w two w two w two w two does your this- sober self think of um is it considered for your high self does because it feels like you're doing all these things for your sober self, right? Mm, yeah, so what does sober Jarrett do for high Jarrett? Yeah, what, does he think anything at all, or is sober Jarrett just really selfish? Is it funny then to, uh, building off that idea, Sarah, is it funny then to be like, you know, some, someone pointing out like, hi, Jarrett, you do all these things for tomorrow, Jarrett. Tomorrow, Jarrett never does anything for you, and then hi, Jarrett's like, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you're just like, as sober Jarrett, you're like, what should I do for high Jarrett? I should get high. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Jared. I like that. that. <laughs> Love that. I'm going to go to the park and score him some drugs. <laughs> Hi, Jared. Just, he couldn't figure out how to do that, but I'm going to do that for him. And then suddenly I'm high, Jared, and I'm like, ah, sober Jared gave me exactly what I wanted. <laughs> I'm going to clean his dishes tonight. <laughs> it's weird because they never meet. <laughs> it's a beautiful pen pal relationship. <laughs> the pen pal relationship like, might be the justification. That might be it. You know? Or it's like a night janitor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cuz I don't know if you guys remember like two or three episodes ago I had that other joke about how everything is fun when I'm high. Mm-hmm. We're talking about how I have like a lot of drug confidence where some people get really freaked out like I can't go outside because what if people know that I'm high and they call the cops or whatever and then my version being like nothing is is not fun to me. So even if I got arrested I'd be like, "Oh man, this is weird." Um, and so I want to make sure that those, I mean, that's either going to be something that I could put that I smash together into one big joke or it's too similar to that other joke. So I really like the, the pen pal thing or the night janitor, I think is a little bit more, I don't know, unique, unique to that bit. Here's a slight more justification. Maybe, um, Mm -hmm. you might be able to say that when people get really high sometimes, I don't know if it's high exactly, definitely drunk, but maybe, maybe high as well. Sometimes when people like, or hot or when they wake up the next morning sober they're a little bit surprised or shocked by the things that they did the night before mm-hmm. i just prefer to be shocked in a pleasant way kind I like of that. Where I like like, that. instead of waking up being like oh my god what did i do last night you're just like what what what, what did this last <laughs> night I mean, the bed's made and the, oh my could god it be that thing where you just on, say, the, on the dining room table <laughs> yeah. could it be that thing we just say the same thing in a different tone like a you know some people wake oh, right. up and like what did I do last yeah. night? And I'm like, what did, <laughs> what did I, I do, do last night? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he is so sweet. Hi, Jared. I don't Thanks, even think any guys. of these things are are not uh, are incongruous. So a mm-hmm. lot of these things kind of you know, there's just different ways of explaining the same behavior. Whether it's night janitor, day janitor, whether it's you know, hey, pen pal relationship. I never meet this guy. Uh, sometimes I just like the idea of being surprised by being pleasantly surprised by the things I do when I'm, when I'm inebriated, uh, all these things kind of do circle around. I don't think any of them canceled another one out. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's possible you could play around with all these ideas and just stick with which one that works best uh, while you're tinkering around in, in front of audiences. Okay. Yeah. All that stuff works out great guys. Thanks so much for that. Nice. Yeah. Um, big word. It's been a while since you or Jarrett put one in there. Incongruous. Mm. <laughs> 
I also want to commend Brett for not doing a uh, a really mean callback to me being mean to your joke. I, I was oh, fully I expecting forgot. right when I, I was fully expecting right when I started to be like dumb. Nope. I hate it. I wasn't gonna do that. I was gonna go, Jarrett. That joke was so smart. That was smart, <laughs> clever premise. I love it. <laughs> and I think audiences will too. <laughs> okay, this is the uh, the longer one. Okay. Cool. Uh, so my fiance and I are very open about our um, bowel movements. Uh, she made me laugh the other day because I was shaving in the bathroom and she started pounding on the door. She's like, you need to take a shit. So I had to hang out in the living room with shaving cream on my face. And I was telling this to a friend of mine, the story, and he was like, she told you she needed to take a shit? That's so unladylike. And I was like, I don't think so. And also, it's practical. Like, how is your, how is your wife supposed to get you out of the bathroom if she can't tell you why she needs to get in there? She's supposed to be like, baby, baby. I need to clean the bathroom. <laughs> I really need to clean the bathroom right now. I bought some containers from Bed Bath & Beyond. I just need to put them in the bathroom right now. And if I don't get in there, I'm going to put these containers in my pants, and I don't want to have to clean that up later. Uh, that's so that's smart is it, and really yeah, this funny. Yeah, this is great. Um, I love this. This isn't longer either, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, longer. yeah I think this collection. one was shorter. <laughs> Uh, first, first thought, um, uh, mm -hmm. my, my fiance and I are in an open relationship. We don't see other people. We just talk about our bowel movements. Um, cause when, as soon as I you said like we're in a very open, <laughs> I already laughed. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, I, feel like marriage is, I just feel like marriage is all about talking about your bowel movements. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, I feel like Joe and I always talk about our bowel movements <laughs> or we'll be like, well, we had a really good one today. Yeah. <laughs> And he's like, I know this is gross, but can I tell you about this BM that I took earlier? Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, let me know. <laughs> we so actually have. But he's coming from someone with colitis, though, so uh, yeah. you, have to, you have to check to see if everyone feels. <laughs> <laughs> that was only once. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I think I only had it once. I've never had it back. But I am concerned about your friend's wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and her and her so, butthole. This is a. Uh, it's a little bit like I. I I'm. I'm. I'm kind of twisting the facts a little bit. And so I guess what okay. I'm worried about in this joke is like, are people going to be so mad at my friend for having this like antiquated view of his wife that they're not that they're going to, you know, focus on that instead of like following me on the rest of the joke? Um, I don't think so. Especially okay. because you're, get you're, you're dishing it yeah. to him why it's wrong. So yeah, yeah. They, if if their thoughts are like that's wrong, and then you articulate it in a funny mm -hmm. way, they're gonna just be satisfied. Yeah, I, I think that you. I think it's a waste of uh, of of energy and, and space. The, the the part that I I don't know didn't connect with most was that explanation where you have to go. Um, me and my wife, we talk about, uh, fiance talk about this. My other buddy thinks that that's, and then you go a little bit too into detail about why he doesn't like, and then you have to come over the top and explain why it's totally okay. Just to mm -hmm. get to this really funny, true act out yeah. where I think that that could happen even without your friend, uh, but keep him in there if you want. Where, it, you know, as simple as my wife and I talk about, you know, the other day she told me, and I'm so glad that we do i'm so glad that she is comfortable talking about it because it'd be so much harder to get me out of the bathroom if she tried to lie like you know lie about it like other people do or other people expect women to do or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be yeah. and then you just go right into it you're just like and then that you're you're to the act out you don't have to include a second person or whatever mm -hmm. or you do include a second person but you're just in and out immediately it's just like yeah. my friend thinks it's weird but i think it would be weirder if and then yeah. go right into it. That's just great. That's really good. Super, super streamlined because it's really funny once you just try to start coming up with every reason <laughs> why you need to go to the bathroom, except for <sighs> poop, except for the toilet. It's great. That's, super, that's really funny. I also like the idea of that's why you're a feminist is because <laughs> you let your wife talk openly about that stuff. Like, <laughs> that was the seed. That's where it started. Wait, are you saying <laughs> yeah. like... Are you saying like that's how low the bar that I've set for myself, or are you saying like that's that's when I realized that women were equal with men or something? Well, you don't shit shame her. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like slut shaming, but you're like, because there are a lot of dudes. Like I know what I've heard <laughs> said he would divorce his wife if she farted in front of him. What? I mean, what? Is that a bit or is that, that like is that a joke? <laughs> Actually, will you? Uh, bleep out the full out. name. Yeah, just a well-known <laughs> comic 
uh, <laughs> I know he was probably joking to the extent of it, like he wouldn't, but mm -hmm, meaning mm -hmm. like they, that's not the relationship that they have. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. I think that's weird. Not that you want a wife that just like completely is like your bro dude. Well, this was fun, even though we, <laughs> we finished talking about my joke like 10 minutes ago. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for your notes, guys. No, this is great. Thank that's, you. That's all I've got for you. But this was a great, a great episode. Thank yeah. you for coming on, Sarah. You were excellent. Yeah, thanks um, for being a part of it. Yeah, it thanks for having me. This is fun. Yeah, yeah. and uh, everybody go uh, buy or stream Sarah's album. It's excellent. Um, and, the voluptuous uh, boy. Follow the her on boy, social yeah. media. Uh, mm -hmm. What's uh, is it? Just your name at Sarah Talamash? At Stalamash. Okay. Um, on and, both. It's not. That's the same on Instagram and Twitter. Cool. Um, and uh, yeah, the, thank you again for for uh, for coming on patreon.com slash ITA pod. And uh, we will see you guys in the comments. Thanks very much. Hey, pretty good. Right, outro. That was great. Yeah, Thanks. that was great. Outro. That was the first outro the we've ever done. Just, <laughs> yeah. just put it out there. <laughs> so I did a pretty good job. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check back for more individual clips and full episodes every Monday. Or you can listen wherever you enjoy podcasts. If you want to support the show and get access to special fan-only content, go to patreon.com slash ITAPod. That's ITAPod as in Is This Anything Podcast. Relevant links in the description. Take care. <laughs>